I first heard about it probably in the newspapers um, in 1981, the same way everyone else did. I thought that it was um, a very unusual disease. Scientists at the National Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta today released the results of a study which shows that the lifestyle of some male homosexuals has triggered an epidemic of a rare form of cancer. At the time I started as a dean, I was already aware of the early reports. It was evident by the mid-1980s, however, that this was a serious problem. Researchers know of 413 people who have contracted the condition. In the AIDS has struck only a reported 1,500 people, but it has killed almost 600 of them. Congress wants to know what to do about AIDS. Victims of the disease say the government has done nothing and has no plan to. And as yet, no one with AIDS has been cured. Early on, it became clear AIDS was not merely another disease in the long history of human afflictions. If you were diagnosed with AIDS in the 1980s, you were almost certainly dead within a year or two. It was a really tough service to be dealing with patients that we didn't know what was happening, we didn't know how to treat them, and they slowly um, got worse and worse, and um, most all of them died. Max Essex in the laboratory had already been involved with uh, retroviral research. He was one of the first to suspect that HIV could be a retrovirus caused disease. That hypothesis was one of the first useful contributions we made. This epidemic was breathing down everyone's necks, but at the same time, we were in a position to do something about it. We're in crowded little labs and everybody was working sort of nonstop. Many times, we'd, if there was a couch to sleep on, many, sometimes we'd sleep on the floor. Was there a competition? Yeah, there was. And I think that's the only way to, to get things moving and get things moving faster. At the earliest stages, it was, at every stage, I would say it was exciting. There were a number of major contributions that came out of the lab during this period. One was the discovery of GP120, which was led by one of my graduate students, Tun Ho Lee. GP120 is an envelope protein of the virus that provided the best way to find out if people were infected with HIV. Another was the discovery of SIV, the simian monkey immunodeficiency virus, led by another of my graduate students, Phyllis Conkey. She found that monkeys at the New England Primate Center who were dying with suppressed immune systems were infected with what turned out to be a relative of HIV. It provided a model to make vaccines, test drugs, and even an evolutionary explanation for how such related viruses could have emerged in people. HAI, in my recollection, was really the brainchild of Harvey Feinberg, who was at that time the dean of the Harvard School of Public Health. I wanted Harvard to declare a clear and compelling commitment to cope with the AIDS epidemic. Max Essex was the obvious choice to lead the enterprise. He was a great leader and one that we knew we could count on to make this the enterprise we wanted. A group of people came together, led by Max. This is really the reason for HAI, a collaborative venture. Well, the main reason to work in Africa against AIDS is uh, it's similar to if you're a fireman, you go to where the fire is. I first met Maurice Templesman in 1985. Dita Blair introduced me to him. I know Maurice has contacts in Senegal, in Zaire. He's the one to talk to. Certainly, he needed no advice uh, when it came to the scientific area and the organization area. But the nature of that disease is such that one has to be very sensitive to the cultural environment in which one functions and continue to be sensitive to that particular issue. He helped us initially in Senegal. This led to another major discovery, the discovery of HIV-2, which was initiated by Phyllis Conkey. We found that sex workers in Senegal were infected with a type of HIV, and we found that it was a new 
HIV in people, namely HIV-2. And all of the sex workers at the time that we tested um, and found to be infected with this new virus w were seemingly healthy. So now we're saying, wow, so you have people infected with an AIDS-like virus, but they're not getting sick. Could that help us figure out how to fight the worldwide AIDS virus uh, with either vaccine or, or treatment? HAI has created multiple partnerships in different locations in Africa. We've had partnerships in Senegal, uh, Tanzania, Nigeria, Botswana, and each one has been a long-term partnership. The BHP Botswana Harvard Partnership got started because we mentioned to the Ministry of Health in Botswana that we could do much more if we had laboratory facilities in the country. We wanted to do research and train people in doing research, including laboratory research, which is essential for controlling the epidemic in this case. We have Harvard undergraduates, graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, all spending time at the laboratory in Botswana. We've trained in the actual fundamentals of course there, over 9,000 healthcare workers. And I think that partnership between the government of Botswana and the Harvard AIDS Institute has really been one of the most productive partnerships also because it was based on a long-term view and the results are there. We also took the blueprint to help get the Tanzania partnership started and was also used in the Nigeria program. So APIN is the AIDS prevention initiative in Nigeria. Uh, it's a program that uh, I started in uh, 2000. We did a huge amount of training with APEN, and we did a lot of uh, what we call um, intervention type research. So it was a great foundation for us at the time that President Bush's plan for PEPFAR was announced in 2003. PEPFAR was a game changer. The U.S. government stopped using the M word, which was millions, and went to the B word, which was billions, in terms of its funding commitment. Um, to AIDS in Africa and other poor places. Prior to PEPFAR, there was dismay in the international community that we would never be able to provide treatment to these resource-limited settings. And PEPFAR showed, without a doubt, you can do it. Well, I think people who are really interested in seeing the results of our research can learn the most by examining the progress in the setting where AIDS is most severe. So if groups go to Botswana, they can see a lot of HIV-infected mothers with their children who never got infected because we've shown very conclusively that you can prevent 99% of the infections that would have otherwise occurred from mother to child transmission. That's something no one would have remotely dreamed that you could have done 10 or 15 years ago. I've been a great admirer of, of Max and his team. They really invested and continue to invest in um, training of people in the, in the labs there. And I think that is uh, fantastic. That's done more and more now, but I think there Max was a pioneer just as he was a pioneer on the science. I've stuck with AIDS research because it's been clear to me that the job's nowhere near done. So it doesn't seem to me that it's a time to switch or, or turn to something else. I think you definitely have to have a passion. You really have to know that this is not an easy problem to solve and you're committed to do something from all different angles. We're living in an age of extraordinary technology that is going to lead to further discovery and finding solutions. Certainly, the medical part will continue, the research part will continue. So my sense, it's not over, but it certainly is in a different, a different stage. It surprises me that it's been 30 years. <laughs> and I guess, it surprises me that so much has happened, although at any given time you feel like things aren't happening fast enough and there's so much more to do. It's imaginable today that we can have a generation free of AIDS. And that is the great vision now for the leadership of public health here at Harvard and around the world.
to strive to achieve. It might take a generation or two for the epidemic to die out entirely, but at least it's on a curve where a smaller and smaller fraction of the adult population of the entire population is infected. I'm optimistic that we will be able to find a way within the next five years to prevent transmission between adults. I am indeed optimistic about the future.